Hello, I'm Richard Ashcroft uh, in Richmond, London, England. <laughs> and I'm here to talk about the work of uh, Jonathan Glazier. You know, I think from the first meeting, I realised there was something in us, both of us, that um, could do something important. Um, we both wanted to do something important, which I think is unusual these days in the music industry. I think the video has kind of been, you know, treated um, there's this idea unless you spend millions the video's not important then you should just do a lip sync and I'm, I was bored at the time of lip sync videos sick of them wanted to do something interested and he wanted to do something interesting with me and I think the thing was he, he knew I could do it he knew I could do whatever he needed um, and I made him aware of how important music was to me and as a musician you know suddenly becoming an actor it, it it brings up certain sort of uh, deep worries within you, you know, when you've been in a studio for a year and suddenly you're on a film set without your top on. You know, you start questioning yourself and you start thinking of all those guys back there in the studio going, ah, look at him there with his top off, you know, parading around that hotel. Even on the day of, re of filming, it was, uh, right, let's do it without your top on kind of thing, you know, and there's fears involved in that sense that I know Phil film goes down for life it's there I am for life you know and it, I said at the time this ain't no D'Angelo you know this ain't no Mr. Universe but at the time I don't know I just thought sod it you know you know it kind of fits in you know what I mean you know it's the same as having a really really obese person in the video you know I'm a, quite a thin guy I, I, you know actually statistically I'm probably the freak I think the only self-doubt really comes in is the fact that the video, and if you make a great video and you make a video that leaves a lasting impression on the audience, will, without you knowing, take away from the, not the power of the music, it, it takes away, in a sense, from the, the options of the music, the options of the listener in what the listener thinks or sees or visualizes when they hear the music. The more stronger the visual image the more difficult it becomes for the listener to separate from the visual image when they hear it. So the fear comes through, I've enslaved in the studio and thought and scrapped to get this thing sounding like this. Is the image that I'm giving the people the right one? Should it be this strong? Should I just show me making the fucking music? All those things, those are the fears. We changed as we went along, you know, if we were talking about a sandwich being brought in, I said, make sure you put cucumber in there. Let's be funny, let's do a tap, give a tap element where the sandwich arrives and I smell the sandwich. I told Jonathan I don't like cucumber. Let's do that, let's, rather than just a sandwich arrive, let me smell it, because I don't, and then take the cucumber and do the sort of side to the room service, because you never get the right thing. All these little subtle touches. So it was, the cool thing was, it was, um, it was allowed to flow on the day, we were allowed to, you know, we would discuss things on the day. There was a couple of guys there, I forget the names. A little Scottish dude and um, a tall, bald dude <laughs> who lingered in the shadows. Maybe Jonathan will um, bring light on those characters. They were there in the background giving their opinions. You know, everyone could kind of, although Jonathan's sort of a very, um, he's very fixed in his, in his objective. He, you know, the cool thing is he's, he's respected me as an artist and a creator and so little tiny things that I put into it were important I think they made it more real the constant bombardment with MTV and videos and advertising you know a bit of silence a bit of mood and atmosphere I found would be interesting and almost run against everything else that was going on at the time you know and really still when I put that when that video comes on it still seems bizarre the track is so low you hardly hear it the silence within it all these things were so important the suspense and the paranoia was in the silences and so for there to be silence there had to be no music and for the whole thing to work the music had to be very low and give a sense of paranoia that that being on your own in a large space in an open room we all know that feeling of waiting for someone, you know, the song itself was about waiting for, 
waiting in a hotel room for your lover, you know, for your life to change at the crossroads and even to the switch, to the light switch, the buzz of the electricity, I think that was, that was a good, good thing to get in because those are the kind of things you pick up when you get paranoid, you pick up on electrical noises and things that you're normally numb to. I think that the pivotal moment was when the, we decided that the ur urination scene should, end, should be at the end, you know, and that only came at the very end. That, to me, came as, um, as much as a shock as it did to the people on the TV in the sense that I'd already done it, but I thought it was in, in a different part. But to me, that's the part of video or filmmaking that sometimes a bit of genius can happen in the edit and things can happen and, and it just seemed so right the second time I saw it I was fucking laughing my head off and ringing Jonathan back saying yeah I'm with you man it's genius even now when I look back when it comes on the odd time I just laugh you know and I think great and I'm, I'm just glad we did it and I've said before people have asked me oh is it you pissing on the music industry is it you doing this that and the other what's the significance well if it was done in the edit and I had no control over it, then I can't fully justify and say, yeah, that's, that's my thoughts or whatever. Ultimately, you know, like sex, build up, release, you know, it's just whatever, you know. We built up, we came around the curtain and I had a slash, you know. It's, it's just, just the way life is. So I loved it, like I said before, for those different reasons. And working with Jonathan, who to me is just like a, He's a guy like me, he's a lad, he's like someone who has got, you know, ambition and believes in his own art form and, you know, it was good to work with someone at that time. I think that's why video was difficult in the early years is there weren't that many people around that were sort of aesthetically minded or, or in the same way or driven in the same way. People who could like football but, you know, weren't afraid to... to explore art and, you know, you know, discover fucking how hard or how exhilarating it really is to make stuff and create things. So, you know, I think that's why these, that, these kind of things work, is when people like that happen to meet on the same path at the same time. You just do something that you, you both buzz off, you know? I think we're approaching this video as a, as a short film or, as I've said before, almost like a scene out of a film that we, was never made. It's the middle of a film, it's the middle of a movie that should have been made maybe, who knows, maybe one day will be made. If someone gives us a good offer, I'm sure Jonathan and I would, yeah, make the whole movie, me walking around the hotel.